Hello, hello and welcome. This is your favorite number enthusiast and equal opportunity enjoyer with my first ever material on this channel. Today's topic of discussion is sparked by an upcoming Manchuria campaign and the Soviet vs Japan fights that will be taking place even before the end of this year. More content on that matter soon, but before that, let's begin with today's topic of conversation. As many of you might know, Enlisted has soldier customization options available for all nations and different theaters. Those are bought by Imperial Exchange orders gained through things like Battle Pass, Events and the Silver Veteran box. I myself have accumulated such an amount, mostly through gambling, that I was able to outfit all of my soldiers with a drip that for essentially all theaters. However, many of you might not know that certain customizations provide an actual combat advantage. Of course, you might have heard of assault engineers like the German ones that wear a helmet providing immense damage reduction to the head, but normal metal helmets, for example, also provide a damage reduction from any incoming damage to the head, just much less significant amount. And this leads us to the topic of today's video, the Soviet SN-42 body armor. Soviet body armor is a customization option found sometimes by default on your Soviet soldiers fighting in the Berlin, however it is possible to be acquired for all theaters by all soldiers. And you might ask, Horsi, why is such a cosmetic important? Well, the body armor is more than just a cosmetic and actually provides a 10% damage reduction for all incoming damage to your torso. In enlisted meta, most weapons are balanced around the 13.5 damage point, as that's the base soldier health plus 35% vitality bonus that almost all soldiers can have. However, thanks to the existence of the body armor, Soviets and Soviets only can have 15 effective HP. This is because 15 damage is the lowest threshold that can be reduced by 10% and punch through the 15.5 soldier health that you get by default plus vitality perk. But Corsi, I still don't understand why it's important, it's just 10%. You see, my friend, the thing is that the body armor is fucking stupid. I wish I was exaggerating this statement, but having 15 effective HP in a game that's balanced around 13.5 is going to cause several problems. And it has been causing a lot of severe problems. Recently, I have created this document to have an actual mathematical proof that body armor is a bigger of an issue than many people think. With the upcoming Manchuria campaign and the Soviet vs Japan fights, this problem is going to get only worse, and I mean significantly worse, because most of the Japanese weapons don't have the 15 damage threshold. First of all, we need to understand why body armor is so important. First case is that the weapon damage is inside the 13.5 to 15 damage bracket. In this scenario, body armor bumping our health from 13.5 to 15 makes the weapon lose its one-shot potential at any ranges. This is also applicable to SMGs that deal over 13.5 damage but with 2 shots, in which case the body armor makes them always take 3 shots to down an enemy. But this is arguably the most important on rifles, as turning a 1-shot rifle into a 2-shot gun is effectively reducing its effectiveness by 15% across majority of its stats. Gever 41, for example, deals 14.4 damage. This is enough to 1-shot enemies at close range, albeit a bit low compared to other nations' BR-3 semi-auto rifles, but it has 350 rate of fire, which is a standard for semi-auto weapons, and a 10-round magazine, which is also a standard for a BR-3 semi-auto. However, if we introduce the body armor into this equation, the Gever 41 becomes even worse weapon than it is now, which is honestly an achievement, because the weapon is dog shit, that's because the 14.4 damage cannot punch through the 15 effective HP that the Soviet wearing an armor has. This effectively doubles the time to kill of the Gever 41, halves it magazine size as you need twice the bullets to get a kill. It also technically increases recoil since you have to adjust it twice and dispersion since you have to roll the RNG twice whether you will hit your shot, but it's really weird to calculate for weapons uniformly, so I'll omit it for now. Just know that it technically worsened, just may not be as applicable or as important. This means that the body armor, and I'm not kidding, 
makes the Gever 41 a significantly worse weapon compared to the BR-2 Soviet Fedorov rifle up to 68 meters, which is the Fedorov's one-shot range. And some people would say, it doesn't matter, it's just another shot, just shoot them first or react faster, as most of the gunfights are decided by who shoots first anyway. For most select fires, the difference is actually 75 milliseconds. And it's not just 75 milliseconds, it's a whole 75 milliseconds. First of all, let's take a look at what happens when you place a shot. Whenever you shoot your weapon, it takes a certain amount of time before it lands and hurts the enemy. This value is equal to the distance between you and the enemy divided by its velocity. For our example, we will use 30 milliseconds. With this value, it means that after you pull this trigger, there is a 30 milliseconds time window before the shot lands, resulting in a kill. And within this 30 millisecond window, an enemy can pull the trigger on their own weapon, which will cause them to die while their bullet is mid-air, but also allows them to land a kill themselves after they die, resulting in essentially a draw. But this is also applicable for your benefit. When the enemy pulls the trigger, you have a certain time window that allows you to also land a killing shot on an enemy, despite dying yourself. This essentially creates a draw bracket, where if two shots are shot within this bracket, the fight will always result in a draw. However, issues begin when you put body armor into the equation. By making your weapon two shot, you're essentially shifting the time window of your opportunity by the time of your weapon bullet cycle, which is how much time it takes for you to fire one bullet. This means that the enemy show now instead of having to fit within the bracket based off your initial shot is now fitting inside the bracket based off your second shot, which is the killing shot. This shifts this time window in favor of the enemy, decreasing your time that you have in which you can shoot and still get a draw, and increasing the time the enemy has where they can shoot and still get a draw. Even if the bracket size remains the same, now the enemy has significantly more advantage than you do, where previously it was symmetrical and balanced. This gets even more ridiculous as we approach the values we find in-game. If the weapon bullet cycle time is actually larger than the enemy bullet travel time, we get a situation where you're actually required to react and shoot the enemy before they do. In this example on screen, we used bullet cycle time of 60 milliseconds, which is actually lower than most select fires have, and the bullet travel time of 30 milliseconds, which is about the travel time of FOT4020 at a distance of 25 meters. We are actually required to shoot at minimum 30 milliseconds faster than the enemy to not lose the fight. Reacting 20 milliseconds faster than the enemy results in a loss. To put long story short, essentially, the body armor shifts the time window you have where you can actually kill your opponent mutually in favor of your opponent linearly to your weapon cycle time. And some may ask, how many weapons does it affect? that the devs still didn't do anything about it? Well, the answer is a goddamn lot. Especially now, Japanese weaponry will suffer immensely from having to face body armor, since most of them fall below the 15 damage threshold, while they normally would have certain one-shot range against normal opponents. German SMGs lose their CQC two-shot potential, making them always three-shot, and that's on top of that that they will always lose some of their effective free shot range, putting them in the same damage bracket as PPS-43. That's entire gimmick is that it has higher rate of fire because it deals less damage. Furthermore, even some weaponry that still does punch through the 15 effective HP still suffers as their one shot range gets reduced by a significant amount. FG-42 goes from having 68 meter one shot range 
that's typical for 20 round select fire rifles like FOT40 and T20 to having only 17 meter one shot range. This leaves 48 meters of most common engage ranges where you are at a 72 millisecond disadvantage. From comparison, Type A Auto has one shot range of 21 meters while having 10 more bullets in the magazine and a better recall and dispersion stat. Gather 41, as mentioned previously, loses its one shot range completely, making it worse than SVT 38 damage wise, while it also has two seconds longer reload. And now the best, the aforementioned Type A Auto loses its one shot potential completely making it have 75 milliseconds disadvantage over a 4020 while effectively making it 15 round in its mag and 30 rounds total select fire all up to 68 meter range where a 4040 also becomes a two-shot select fire and the best part is that all this benefit is given to a nation that already wields the strongest infantry weapons at battle rating 2, battle rating 3 and battle rating 5. All in all, the body armor decreases your time window to get a draw by 114 milliseconds on average. This is half of my reaction time, which is insane. I could be 50% slower and I would have beaten myself if only I hadn't equipped a cosmetic. There are indeed certain weapons where body armor does not matter as they deal so much damage that they punch through the body armor at all the ranges essentially anyway. Too bad that most of the weapons are machine guns that are completely out of meta and assault rifles that are also completely out of meta and only two assault rifles that really matter is the Federov Automat and the Scotty Naval Rifle, which both lose their one-shot potential when they're facing an armored opponent. Quite literally, the Scotty Naval Rifle becomes a 15-round hide just because someone equipped a cosmetic, which is honestly just ridiculous. All the exact information how body armor affects different weaponry in different ways, whether it's increasing their time to kill or whether it's decreasing their effective one-shot range, can be found in this document that I have created. It covers all SMGs, rifles, machine guns and assault rifles. I also included this section where it explores how body armor decreases the free shot range on the SMGs as technically their two-shot potential is very limited. But even then, the body armor still gives an advantage to the Soviets, which is crazy. So in the end, the body armor does mess up with a lot, and I mean a lot, of weapon damage thresholds. It completely breaks the meta as it's not adjusted to having effective 15 HP, and Soviets are extremely strong faction, which just doesn't make sense for them to have any advantage of this kind. I think it's high time that Soviets get rid of their crashes and the devs finally address this surprisingly impactful problem that have been around for years in the game. And people have also complained for years. Especially since to change the body armor damage reduction to zero is equivalent of changing one value in one line of code for each body armor file. It's that simple. It's a fix that requires 15 minutes of work. But apparently devs don't like doing a knee-jerk reaction to a problem that has been around for almost four years at this point and that people have complained a lot about. And I really hope that this video will get the notion of enlisted players to actually go and push for this change as it, I believe, is completely ridiculous. I've played Soviets and found it completely ridiculous. And now that I have solid mathematical proof, 
there is nothing that will make me believe that it is not completely fucking ridiculous. I'll be trying as hard as I can to raise as much awareness as possible and push for this change as hard as possible. And I encourage everyone to do the same, because this is simply out of place in Enlisted. As much as the game is unbalanced, this is fixable within minutes and it messes up with so many weapons that it's just crazy to have in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this nerd out and I will see you on the battlefield, hopefully without wearing the body armor. See ya! It's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma Balls. Mm.